Next, we are going to understand about the nervous tissue. Nervous tissue. What is nervous tissue? The tissue which control and coordinate the other tissue by its what? The uh, the by its contraction by its control. How the how the the now is being nervous tissue is being controlled because of the special feature of the nerve cell. What is a nerve cell? Nerve cells are two in number. One is a neuron and it is called as it is a major conducting cell and another one is called as neuroglia one is neuron and another one is neuroglia the neurons are the major conducting cells and neuroglia are the glial cells are the neuroglia the neuroglia are the supportive cells what is the function of the neuron neurons are the major contents it is receiving the impulse conducting the impulse analyzing the impulse storing the impulse and it is giving a response to that of the received stimuli so what we can say as nervous tissue or nervous system the tissue which receive and respond to the stimuli what do you mean by stimuli the external what impulse are the information the informations which is in the environment has to be observed properly and it has to be responded properly what is the use of that it is for the survival of the tissue or survival of the species so now the nervous tissue is having two major components one is neuron and another one is neuroglia the receiving cell of the neuron or neuron which receive the impulses are called receptors receptors what are the receptors there are two types of receptors one is exteroceptor and another one is interoceptor one is exteroceptor and another one is interoceptor exteroceptor means which is seen in the outer part of the body visual receptor the retinal cells the rods and cones then auditory receptors the auditory cells are present the organ of corti then all factory receptor the all factory cells are present so like that these are the cells which you call as what receptors then ex these are about the extraceptors then interoceptor the receptor which are seen inside the body are called the interoceptors what are the interoceptors the chemoreceptors which uh, receiving the what chemical changes inside the body what is the chemical the electrolytes changes which is seen inside the body we call as chemoreceptors and the baroreceptors what are the baroreceptors the receptors which are sensing the the partial pressure of the gases po2 level and pc2 poco2 levels being monitored by the receptors we call as baroreceptors so chemoreceptors baroreceptors and the third special kind of receptor seen inside the body interoceptor is proprioceptor proprioceptor the proprioception or proprioceptor what is proprioceptor the receptor which sense the positioning of the body parts is called what proprioceptor so the chemoreceptors baroreceptors and the proprioceptors are present inside the body same time which is seen in the outer part of the body touch receptor the fine touch receptor crude touch receptors pain receptor temperature receptor these all are the exteroceptors the receptors which are seen in the uh, body then impulses are being conducted the impulse conduction is happens in two directions one is afferent impulse and another one is a efferent impulse afferent impulse which is received reached into that of the what the cell body and efferent impulse which is coming out from that of the cell body that means usually the afferent impulse is a sensory impulse and if the fiber is carrying the afferent impulse it or sensory impulse we will call as sensory fiber and the bundle of the sensory fiber we will call as sensory nerve 
and opposite one or another one is motor neuron or motor fiber or motor nerve. The bundle of the motor fiber we call as motor nerve. What is that? It is carrying the motor effect. What do you mean that motor effect? It is nothing than in our word we can say it is a response. The response is being carried out by some nerves, some neurons. So neurons which is carrying the impulse upwards is called the afferent neuron and it is a sensory neuron and neurons which carrying this responses is called as efferent neuron or efferent fiber. So like that there are two fibers, afferent fiber and efferent fibers. Then what is next? So receiving the impulse, conducting impulse and then next about what? Analysis. The analysis and storage of the impulses is happened by the fusion of the two sets. What are they? The cell bodies. So cell body aggregations of the nervous tissue is called as what? Gray matter. And the aggregations or bundle of the axonic fibers is called as what? White matter. So nervous tissue is having two areas, gray area and white area. The gray area or gray matter in the sense where the aggregation of cell body is more. And what will be the function of the gray matter? The impulses are being analyzed and stored. And the white matter, what about the white matter? The bundle of the axonic fibers in the peripheral nervous system is called white matter where the impulses are being just contacted. So, Totally we have to understand that the impulses in the neuron are being received, conducted, analyzed and responded. How the impulses are being responded? The impulses are being responded through the effectors. Impulses are being received through receptors and impulses are being uh, responded through that of the effectors. What are the effectors? There are three major structures. One the muscles. Muscles are making movements or response. Then vessels, then glands. So these are the three things, muscles, vessels and glands. What are the muscles? Skeletal muscles, visceral muscles and cardiac muscles which can make the response. That is called musculomotor effect. Then the vessels, the blood vessels can contract and relax and by that it can increase or it can reduce the blood supply, vasodilatation and vasoconstriction. By that the responses can be arised. And this is the uh, effect we called vasomotor effect. First more effect is called musculomotor effect. Then third effector is the gland. The glands which will secrete the fluid. And by releasing the fluid it can show its what the response. And this is the thing which we call as secretomotor effect. So like that there are three effects which we have to understand. That is musculomotor effect, vasomotor effect and secretomotor effect. This is the thing which we have to understand about the neuron. Then classification of neuron based on length Golgi type 1 and Golgi type 2. Long one is Golgi type 1, short one is Golgi type 2. Then based on what? The myelin sheath, what is myelin sheath? The neuroglial cell cover is called as myelin sheath. The myelin sheath if it is covering the axonic fiber it is called what? The myelin sheath it is called as myelination and the based on the availability or presence of the myelination and we call as myelinated and non myelinated and then third one. the presence in the arm, uh, then based on the number of processes, sometimes usually the neuron will be having a single axonic process or single process we will call as unipolar neuron and sometimes one axonic process and other one dendrites would be the extension and this is called bipolar neuron and sometimes there will be more than two, ax two processes and they will be called as multipolar neuron and Sometimes there will be a pseudo unipolar that means it will be having a single process and then it will divide into two. So based on the axonic processes the neurons are classified into unipolar, bipolar, multipolar and pseudo unipolar. 
then another one classification based on presence in ganglia what do you mean by ganglia another one word the aggregation of cell body in the central nervous system is called as nuclei what is that nuclei what is nuclei the aggregation of cell body in the central nervous system is called as nuclei same aggregation if it is present in the peripheral nervous system it is called ganglia similarly two more word the aggregation of cell body in the central nervous system is called the tract sorry axonic fibers in the central nervous system is called tract the aggregation of what the axonic fibers in the peripheral nervous system is called no literally no what is no no is nothing than the aggregation of axonic fibers in the peripheral nervous system so this is the way we have understood about the nerve neuro nervous tissue the nervous tissue is formed by neurons and neuroglial cells the neurons are the major conducting cells neuroglia are the supportive cells what support it is giving first one protection by insulation or myelination second one it gives nourishment third one it is lining the cavities of brain and fourth one it is making a yeah, blood brain barrier so this is the way we have to understand about the for the functions of the neurons and neuroglia the neurons and neuroglia are united together forming the nervous tissue and nervous tissue is forming the nervous system and nervous system is divided into three what are they autonomic nervous system peripheral nervous system and central nervous system central nervous system peripheral nervous system and autonomic nervous system what is central nervous system the part of the nervous system which analyze and store the impulse is called central nervous system peripheral nervous system what about the peripheral nervous system the part of the nervous system uh, which what transmit the impulse and receive the impulse and respond the impulse is called peripheral nervous system then autonomic nervous system what about the autonomic nervous system the part of the nervous system which control the organs which are functioning automatically is called what autonomic nervous system so central nervous system peripheral nervous system and autonomic nervous system central nervous system consists of brain and spinal cord peripheral nervous system consists of 12 pairs of cranial nerves and 31 pairs of spinal nerves and autonomic nervous system which consists of sympathetic part and parasympathetic part so this is about what the uh, the classification of nervous system then about the what the 12 pairs of cranial nerves we have to understand the olfactory optic oculomotor trochlear trigeminal abducens facial vestibulo cochlear glossopharyngeal vagus accessory hypoglossal then 31 pairs of spinal nerves cervical gate thoracic 12 lumbar 5 sacral 5 coccygeal 1 so this is the way we have to understand about the classification of nervous system then about the parts of brain the parts of brain what about the parts of brain divided into three forebrain midbrain and hindbrain forebrain is otherwise called as prosencephalon midbrain is otherwise called as mesencephalon hindbrain is otherwise called as rhombencephalon r h o m p rhombencephalon the prosencephalon is divided into two what are they tel encephalon tel and diencephalon the tel encephalon has two cerebral hemispheres and the corpus callosum the diencephalon has five thalamic structures what are the five thalamic thalamus epithalamus metathalamus subthalamus and hypothalamus the midbrain mesencephalon has four parts crest cerebri substantia nigra tegmentum and tectum crest cerebri substantia nigra tegmentum and tectum 
the rhombencephalon is divided into two what are they metencephalon and myelencephalon metencephalon has pons and cerebellum and myelencephalon has medulla oblongata details of the central nervous system that means the parts of brain and other structures and the various peripheral nerves we can come understand in other aspects okay mm -hmm.